Bill, Madison County. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So everyone, please welcome Miss Ellen Jemerson. Thank you. <laughs> I absolutely have no idea what to say. <laughs> Other than to say that um, saying yes, when Heather Reed called me and asked me if I would perform the first marriage, saying yes was probably maybe the fourth best decision I ever made after marrying my husband and having my two daughters. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Melissa. <clears throat> I actually could tear up very easily. Um, you know, some things are just meant to be. And it's been a long time coming. It's been too long, too long of a time coming. But the day finally arrived, and to think that I got to be even a little bit a part of it just, just touches me no end. Um, and, and the support I got from all of y'all means so much to me. I think a lot of you know that... Uh, <clears throat> After I performed the wedding, the Southern Baptist Convention asked my church to leave. Um, so, you know, that was not easy for me. My Southern Baptist roots go way back. But, um, you know, it is what it is, and you do what you have to do, and uh, you don't look back. So, I am thrilled. <laughs> if, I, if I had it to do all over again, I'd do it all over again in a heartbeat. <laughs> And I love y'all, and um, I appreciate that you love me back. Thank you, Ellen. We appreciate your sacrifice that you've made for us, and it will all come back to you <laughs> in space. Thank you. I uh, love you too, darling. Yes, that was very nice. All right, next up, I would like to introduce my dear friend, Melissa Hively. And she is going to read to you a, uh, a memorial to Lynn Abbott, who was our co-officiant on our wedding, February 9th, 1915. No, wait. Wait, how old am I? Well, okay. 2017. Wait. Okay. Anyway, Lynn would understand. But Lynn was our coefficient at our wedding, whatever day it was. And Melissa Howley is one of her dear friends. And she is going to tell you how much she loves her and why. Hi, I'm Melissa Hyde, and usually I speak off the cuff, um, but I decided to write this down in case I break down just a little bit. Lynn was my dear friend for 30 years, um, and um, I want to get it as right as I can get it for her. A year ago today, we completed wedding week, the anniversary of which we gathered to celebrate tonight. What a week it was. My role here tonight is to celebrate and pay tribute to the life of Dr. Lynn Abbott, who was a celebrant for many couples that week and an inspiration to all who met her there. Clad in purple robe with a rainbow sash and a huge smile, she reveled in the love that was present and celebrated the beginning of a new era of acceptance for the LGBT community that most of us never thought we would see in our lifetimes. But, yes we did, and when we can. <laughs> Many of you only got to know her for a number of months. I was blessed to have her as a part of my life for 30 years. First as my first feminist therapist at the age of 18 or 19, and then as a dear friend. What a tremendous impact she had on my life. Lynn was an accomplished woman. She had four children and a legion of grandchildren whom she all loved more than life itself, and a life partner of 28 years, Jenny Leisure. She received three college degrees, the last of which was a doctoral degree in psychiatric social work from the University of Tuscaloosa. Where she, which she earned while raising four children under less than desirable economic, economic circumstances. She went on to serve as an associate professor of psychiatry here in Huntsville at the medical school, which is where we met when she became my feminist therapist when I was still in my teens. 
She engaged in private practice off and on for many years, helping many individuals and couples to grow toward their potential. She served as an associate professor of social work at Alabama A&M University for 10 years and was instrumental in the development of the MSW program there and its accreditation. She retired to gardening with her beautiful flowers, herbs, gnomes, and crystals, and as well as, well as her activism, and role as a friend, community member, and a grandmother supreme, and to more home life with her life partner, Jeannie Leisure. I learned many things from her along the way. I'd like to talk about three of those. Number one, life is an adventure. The best characterization of this with Lynn would be, the mud will wash off, but the memories will last forever. We camped, canoed, hiked, crawled into caves along the Tennessee River with water lapping into their openings, climbed cliffs with homemade equipment, and drove through many forest roads and mud puddles. You know, Lynn believed that almost anything was possible, and she was mostly right, except for maybe the mud puddles. Um, we sank more than one vehicle up to its axles um, and often needed two trucks and winches to pull us out after a very long walk back to the nearest phone, often in the dark. Um, and, um, you know, that's why I still have AAA plus to this day. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to share is um, what she taught me about the power of words. Words once uttered and heard once written and read, take on a life of their own. They create a reality, whether they be words you only utter or write to yourself, or words spoken to others or in community. They shape the way we view ourselves and others. They shape how others view us. They shape how a community thinks and feels about itself, and how others think and feel about that community. Prayers and spells can make us agents of change as we speak them, and act in accordance with them. Affirmations are important and very powerful. Speaking them in community can change things. Um, speak and be the change you wish to see in the world. The third thing that I that she taught me was the power of ritual, um, which I lovingly call smells and bells. Um, ritual changes us. Um, rituals create meaning, meaningful manifestations and memories um, and milestones um, just as the rituals um, that she performed during wedding week changed the participants. Lynn and I engaged in many rituals together and in community. Every time I smell sage burning, frankincense, lavender, rosemary, or a campfire, I will remember her and all those times that we shared. Lynn was a change agent in my life and the lives of so many others. Just a little history here, and when I say we, um, you have to remember, um, I'm including Jenny too, because um, I knew Lynn for two years before she and Jenny got together and announced that they were together um, on a day that we called Meatloaf Sunday, um, where we were um, several of us invited to Lynn's home, and Jenny made her famous meatloaf, and oh wow, that's where it all started. On June the 28th, 2014, Lynn Abbott was almost killed in a car accident, but she cheated death that day to live a final year that is best characterized by her friend, Carol Dayton, who said this, what she did in the last year of her life could only be overshadowed by the magnitude of what she did with the rest of her life. She made an amazing recovery from the wreck and had such a positive attitude while she did. Just a side note, Jenny let me go back just after she came out of surgery for liver, liver lacerations and spleen and uh, gosh, broken vertebrae, um, uh, broken ribs, and a brain bleed, and she was heavily dosed on fentanyl and some other drugs, but she recognized me, and with all those injuries, she told me, she said, I think my pinky's broken. <laughs> At which point, I was pretty sure that it was going to be all right. Um, in 2015, she was an officiant for Wedding Week, joining many gay and lesbian couples in marriage. Then in March, she traveled to Selva to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, marching across the Edmund Pettus Bridge because she understood well that there is still so much to be done toward achieving racial equality. And her picture on that march appeared on the front page of USA Today and in the Atlanta Constitution. In June, she received a much-deserved award at Huntsville's Gay Pride Day, and we ended the month celebrating the SCOTUS ruling together with Jenny at Freedom. In August, she got to travel to meet her 
um, newest grandchild, Izzy, and to help care for her while she was in the hospital. Lynn Abbott believed in freedom and did not rest until she departed, departed our earthly company far too soon and unexpectedly on September the 5th, 2015. In conclusion, I'd like to share words from chants and songs that we share together and in community. They bring me comfort now and speak to who she was. The people grew through the knowledge that she gave them, herbs to heal their bodies and spells to make their spirits whole, calling on the wise ones, celebrating in dance and, celebrating in dance and song. Isis Astarte Diana, Hecate Demeter Kali Yanana. Isis Astarte Diana, Hecate Demeter Kali Yanana. Isis Astarte Diana, Hecate Demeter Kali Yanana. We all come from the goddess, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain fall into the ocean. We all come from the goddess, and to, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain fall into the ocean. Hoof and horn, hoof and horn, all that dies shall be reborn. Fire and rain, fire and rain, all that dies shall live again. And finally, she changes everything she touches, and everything she touches changes. She changes everything she touches, and everything she touches changes. And she touched us, and we're changed. Dr. Lynn Abbott, a life well lived, April 21st, 1943 to September 5th, 2015. Mary meet, Mary part, and Mary meet again. Blessed be. Thank you, Melissa, for your heartfelt tribute. Thank you to her assistant, Heather. This is just, this has been the best night ever, but it's going to get better because the Huntsville Simmons. <laughs> The Huntsville Feminist Court now has a presentation for us, also in honor of Dr. Lynn Abbott. Uh, welcome to the stage, the Huntsville Feminist Court. I'm going to say just a few words while we're getting, uh, getting ourselves together here. We're wearing purple tonight in honor of Lynn. And um, uh, some of you know that she was a longtime member of the Huntsville Feminist Chorus. Um, so we're going to sing her favorite song. Uh, it's about Ella Baker, one of the great leaders of the civil rights movement. Ella's greatness lay in empowering other people, especially young people, to step into the spotlight. She began her civil rights career in 1940, working with the NAACP. She organized the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and held a conference for sit-in leaders, which became the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Ella's public <coughs> words reflect her deep commitment to human rights, as well as her belief in empowering the young. Arranged and set to music by Bernice Johnson Reagan of Sweet Honey in the Rock, we're proud to sing for you Ella's song. We who believe in 
that which touches me most is that I had a chance to work with people, passing on to others that which was passed on to me. To me, young people can birth. They have the courage where we fail. And if I can but shed the light as they carry it through the day. speak on that, but what I can say is I am a stand-in here tonight for James Robinson, who I'm sure many of you in this room know um, and have worked with. I'm here on the behalf of the Free to Be Anti-Violence Project, and in just a couple minutes, we will be, um, I will be drawing a name out of this cup here um, for a couple that was married during wedding week who will have the honor of cutting the cake donated by Honey Pie Bakery, is that correct? Yeah. Woo. yeah. I want to thank them very much for that generous donation. Um, but as I'm here today, I just really was thinking about another project I'm involved with called No Huntsville. I was there earlier today taping, and we had Sunny Hereford there today. I don't know um, if you guys recognize that name. I see somebody clapping way in the back. Um, Sunny is a big part of the civil rights movement in history. In 1963, he was the first child to go to public school in an integrated 
It's cool. So being a child of segregation, um, to see Sunny today and talk about what it was like to be a part of that in 1963 was pretty amazing. But the fact that Brown versus Board of Education happened about eight years earlier, right, gives us a clue as to what is going on here in the state of Alabama, and I don't know that it's changed that much. So just um, while we're celebrating and we're all here and very happy about wedding week and everything that had happened, Free to Be is still here to help um, advocate for those rights that we have and try to defend them. And on that note, I would like to quickly say a couple words about the Oscar party that we're having at the end of the month, which is a fundraiser. So um, we're bringing five movies to Madison 12 that are Oscar nominated. You guys can't see them anywhere else in the Huntsville area. We're bringing uh, five of those here for $40. You can get a pass for the whole week to see all of these Oscar nominated movies. It's a really cool fundraiser. Go check it out at OscarPartyHSV.org. We really appreciate all of the support that you give to this agency, and thank you. Okay, do you want to come up here and help me with the, the drawing? Awesome, thanks so much. All right. We're going to draw out of the plastic cup to see the cake cutters. And it's Tammy and Misty. Yeah. 